Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So um, today's project uh, we're going to be working on is back on the J Advanced Planer Matcher. So uh, we're down really to that last real step that we need to get this thing running, and that's getting that final uh, jack shaft all um, uh, put back together. And uh, to do that, uh, the, there's the Babbitt bearings on there, and there are two Babbitt um, bearing blocks that hold the Babbitt bearings uh, on the mount to the main frame of the machine. Uh, one of those uh, Babbitt bearing blocks, when uh, we got the machine, it the sh looked like the jack shaft had been hit at some point, and uh, it was just busted. Uh, so uh, we were able to take the, the second one that was still in good shape. Uh, it was an identical casting to the other one, and we sent those off to uh, Cattail Foundry um, and had them uh, actually make us a new set of bearing caps or castings for that. Uh, but there is some machine work that needs to be done to these in order to get them uh, ready to go on there. And that's what we're going to be working on today is getting these machine work ready for these bearing caps uh, so that we can go ahead and get the, the Babbitt poured uh, for that shaft and get that jack shaft running. So this is the original um, bearing block that was uh, on the machine. And as you can see, uh, this piece down here was busted out. This is the new casting that we have made. And of course, you see everything's there like it's supposed to be. And even the uh, top bearing uh, block on this one, this ear was broken off on this side. So uh, we ended up just having both of those new pieces cast, both the top and the bottom, again, using uh, the good one that was still on the machine as a uh, pattern to do this from. So um, what we're going to do is, uh, is, first off, is this area in here is, is machined. Uh, nice and flat and square because uh, this fits on a kind of a little shelf, a little bracket on the uh, matcher and it needs to fit down there and then uh, we're going to punch that hole in there. Uh, the hole is not on center. Uh, we're going to measure that and we're going to basically put that hole right back uh, where it was. I'm not exactly sure why it's off like that but I suspect there was a reason for it so we're just going to basically come in here uh, and do that. So. So what we've got for a setup on this is I've got this um, angle plate mounted to the uh, mill. And um, um, it's just basically got it clamped down here uh, with my clamping system here. So I've got the two ears clamped down and then also put another clamp across the back there. Uh, so this is basically just in here right now using just the rough casting on here to seat against. Uh, but the first step here again is we need to get a reference surface here. Uh, and once we get that, then we'll actually mill the top of this uh, square uh, with, with this face here. But right now we're just going to work on this. So this has uh, got to be, again, milled flat here and this side square. I've got a, um, a little uh, uh, cutter in here that's got 90 degree sides on the side so that I can come in here and, and face the bottom as well as the sides on here. Uh, and we're just going to do this on the milling machine on the, on the vertical mill. I uh, could have done this on the horizontal mill. In fact, I considered seriously doing this on the horizontal mill where I could have just bolted this down flat to the table. But I didn't have the right tooling. I didn't have really the adapters and stuff to, to do everything I needed to. Uh, it was just going to be easier in this case to do this on the vertical mill. I, I, however, I would say that it would probably get a little bit more of a stable setup for this on the horizontal mill if I'd had the right uh, cutters to mount over there to do that. I'm happy with that. It didn't quite clean up all the way across the bottom, but that gives us a good reference uh, surface to get that flat, so that'll be fine. Uh, so now we need to lay out where that hole needs to go in here and punch that hole in there to match the, uh, the other one. Alright, so I did some measuring, and it's an inch and a half from the top and about an inch and a half from this edge. Again, not quite in the center, but we're going to put it right where it was. I'm going to start by just uh, punching that with a center drill, and then we'll uh, drill it out. Uh, with pilot hole and then come back. The, the bolt that goes through there is a three quarter inch bolt so uh, we're gonna punch that through with a um, 49 64 uh, drill bit 
uh, just to give just a little bit of clearance in there uh, for that bolt. So. Just a reminder, anytime you're working with cast iron, it's a good idea to try to vacuum your chips up rather than blowing them off with an air hose. Uh, this cast iron dust, you see we got some real fine dust down there. That can be abrasive on your machine and when you sit there and hit it with an air hose, uh, it gets all down into your way, sticks to the grease and uh, it's just not good for your machine. So I always try to vacuum it up and then I'll wipe my machine down uh, with any exposed ways uh, before I go back to moving it around and that just helps uh, preserve the life of your machines. So now that we've got this notched out in here and uh, we got a good reference surface that we mounted to. So we just got the surface plate or the angle plate mounted to the mill and then that's sitting on the top here. So that should be square across and of course square on the side bolt it down. We've got this twisted on here so that it's running more or less parallel. We just got a rough casting inside here so you know that's a little bit of eyeball work there. There was nothing really we could indicate off of uh, but it's uh, you know it looks like it's running true. So here's the uh, the good one that we have and as you can see what we need to do is we've got to just uh, get a good flat surface all the way across the top and then we'll have to come back in here and uh, mill out uh, this little uh, channel in here and that's where the uh, top cap is goes down on there and this kind of registers that top cap uh, to the to the bottom uh, bearing block so let's go ahead uh, you can see here um, to our our mounting system here so like I said it's on the surface plate uh, you know we had a lot of hanging out on this end so we just put a little uh, a machinist jack up underneath that to give it just some extra support uh, out here on this end. Hopefully uh, we can do this without making uh, too much chatter. I think we got a pretty tight fit. I'll probably take some light cuts because down on this end in particular it's just not really anything holding it except this machinist jack. So we'll take some light passes and get that cleaned up. All right, we took about a total of about 40 thousandths off of that uh, to get it to clean up. And there's a couple little voids in here, but you know, we got 98% of it uh, cleaned up flat, so I think we're gonna go with that. Uh, we'll change over and we're gonna cut that notch in there now. All right, I've got a regular end mill in here now, and um, we've done some math and found the center of this thing and moved it over so that I, I wanna end up with a, a a notch in here that basically is 2.73 uh, inches across and 200 thousandths deep and I've just got the whole amount in there right now. Again I've, I've done some measuring uh, over here on the DRO and uh, everything's set so we're just going to make a pass all the way down this side, move it over, make a pass down the other side. So let's see how it goes. Man, my mill's got way too much slop in it. We're going to have to take that in two passes. I'm going to go a hundred thousandths deep and then come back and 
cut the rest of it. Right on the money, we were looking for 2.730, and I am just right on that. And let's see, the depth was supposed to be 200 thousandths, and about 10 over, but no big deal. All right, so next we need to work on the top caps, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off, but I'm going to leave it all mounted in this um, fixture here on this angle plate because uh, we've got to come back and drill the holes for um, the two, and I think I'm going to go ahead and, and drill through both of them at the same time so they line up, and we can just do it right on this fixture, uh, but we can safely just unbolt this and remove it off the mill for right now. Okay, so now we've got the uh, rough casting for the top cap, and um, it too needs some machine work done. This is the uh, oil reservoir in the top. And uh, basically what we've got to do is flatten all this and then notch it out so that actually we have a raised part here that fits down in that groove. And these, these will be notched out 200 thousandths deeper on either side. So most of the mill work on this gets done on this side. Uh, but I want to make sure that I can get this clamp down to the table real good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by Clamping it down this way, and I'm going to take that cutter and uh, just barely skim the top of this uh, casting here just so that I have a fairly flat surface. It doesn't have to be perfectly machined all the way across, but what I want to make sure is I don't have any rocking going on. Uh, so by doing that, even if I've just got a couple of high spots on here where it's coming in contact with the table, that'll be good enough. Uh, so I'm not looking at taking very much off at all, but we're just going to, like I said, just clamp this straight down to the table and uh, do that and then we'll flip it over and it'll be sitting on, the, on this uh, well right here. Alright, so we've got this clamped down uh, to the table now. Uh, should be fairly flat across here. And what we want to do first is just clean the top up, particularly along this uh, edge here. If it's a little bit low out here, it doesn't matter because we're going to have to notch that down to 100 thousandths anyway. Uh, but we do want to get a good clean edge, uh, flat surface all the way across there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. cut this notch through here. Uh, I'm going to try taking half of the total depth, which is about um, 0.875 deep. Uh, and this should be over enough to where we end up with uh, 2.7 between the two shoulders here. And we want to go a total of about uh, 175 thousandths deep.
All right, so we have this now milled out. Everything uh, is a good fit. We've put our um, bottom piece back on the mill again. Uh, like I said, we never unclamped this from the from the angle plate, so we just bolted this back down. And uh, now we got it, these fit together just perfect. So now what we need to do is come in here and drill the holes on each side. Uh, it needs to be, the bottom is going to be tapped uh, 5 8 11. The top will just have a hole go through it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, drill this out for a 5 8 11 tap. And uh, I'm going to clamp both of these together and we'll just drill everything at one time and that way everything will be lined up just right. Um, and then after we take it apart, I'll punch these top ones out uh, on the drill press. We'll just enlarge them a little bit uh, to make that, let that bolt have clearance in there. So uh, I think what we're going to do is just uh, take a C-clamp and uh, clamp these in place. Make sure that's lined up where I want it. And we'll do one on the other side here in just a minute. So we just need to go ahead and tap these. Uh, it was going to be, normally I power tap this on the mill, but with the top piece on there, it was going to be more trouble to do it than it was worth. So I'm just going to hand tap these uh, 5 8 11. Using my new to me uh, number five tap handle here for the first time. All right, I went ahead and just uh, bored these out a little bit oversized on drill press, nothing fancy there. Uh, and I have bolted these together. I've just used some hex head bolts for now. I'm gonna have to come back and uh, make some 5 8 inch uh, square head bolts to make this uh, more period for uh, what I'm restoring. But for right now, just to get it test fit together, uh, I'm real happy with what we're looking at. So this thing is fitting together really, really nice. Uh, just exactly what I was looking for. Um, so everything looks good on this. This is almost done. There is only one little thing left I need to do. And uh, that is up here. This is a little oil reservoir. Uh, and you'll put some wicking in here, some cotton or wool or something just to kind of help hold the oil. Uh, and there'll be holes that, that drip the oil down onto the Babbitt Barrens. Now there is a little lid that fits over here. And I had that cast uh, while I was doing it. So um, I got a little bit of fitting to do uh, with some files just to get this working right. And then we have to drill some holes in this and uh, put a pin through there so that that will just flip open. Uh, but I have run out of time for today, so we'll have to finish that part up uh, on another uh, day out here at the museum. So that wraps up this uh, video. You've seen how we've done some machine work out here, um, uh, getting this uh, bearing block all ready to go back on the machine and like I said we're almost done uh, one little more step and this will be ready to go back together and uh, we can get these mounted on and uh, go ahead and start getting the Babbitt bearings poured uh, for the bottom shaft uh, or for the, sh the jack shaft uh, to, to power this so uh, this is uh, you know it was, it was a fun little project uh, again you know we're working with raw castings uh, we had these uh, cast uh, from the originals the, the good set that was left and uh, I'm very happy with the results. Uh, I think these are pretty much ready to go. So uh, we'll uh, get back out here uh, on another day and uh, continue working on the Vance uh, planer matcher. Hopefully we'll have this uh, project finally knocked out soon. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, as always, thank you my many subscribers. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel uh, and you'll get to see more stuff like this all the time, uh, either at my home shop or out here at the museum where I do volunteer work. So. Thanks again, guys.